Tiantai Chinese, Tiantai Pinyin, PRC Standard Mandarin, Tiantai, Rock Standard Mandarin, Tiantai is a school of Buddhism in China, Japan, Korea, and Vietnam that reveres the Lotus Sutra as the highest teaching in Buddhism. In Japan the school is known as Tendai, in Korea as Chiante, and in Vietnam as Thien Thai. The name is derived from the fact that Ziyi 538 to 597 CE, the fourth patriarch, lived on Tiantai Mountain. Ziyi is also regarded as the first major figure to make a significant break from the Indian tradition, to form an indigenous Chinese system. Tiantai is sometimes also called the Lotus School. After the central role of the Lotus Sutra in its teachings, during the Sui dynasty, the Tiantai school became one of the leading schools of Chinese Buddhism, with numerous large temples supported by emperors and wealthy patrons. The school's influence waned and was revived again through the Tang dynasty and also rose again during the Song dynasty. Its doctrine and practices had an influence on Chinese Chan and Pure Land Buddhism. History Unlike earlier schools of Chinese Buddhism, the Tiantai school was entirely of Chinese origin. The schools of Buddhism that had existed in China prior to the emergence of the Tiantai are generally believed to represent direct transplantations from India, with little modification to their basic doctrines and methods. However, Tiantai grew and flourished as a native Chinese Buddhist school under the fourth patriarch, Ziyi, who developed an original and extensive Chinese Buddhist system of doctrine and practice through his many treatises and commentaries. Over time, the Tiantai school became doctrinally broad, able to absorb and give rise to other movements within Buddhism, though without any formal structure. The tradition emphasized both scriptural study and meditative practice, and taught the rapid attainment of Buddhahood through observing the mind. The school is largely based on the teachings of Ziyi, Zhanren, and Jili, who lived between the 6th and 11th centuries in China. These teachers took an approach called classification of teachings in an attempt to harmonize the numerous and often contradictory Buddhist texts that had come into China. This was achieved through a particular interpretation of the Lotus Sutra. Early figures Due to the use of Nagarjuna's philosophy of the Middle Way, he is traditionally taken to be the first patriarch of the Tiantai school, the 6th century Dhyana master Wei Wen Chinese, Wei Wen is traditionally considered to be the second patriarch of the Tiantai school. Wei Wen studied the works of Nagarjuna, and is said to have awakened to the profound meaning of Nagarjuna's words. All conditioned phenomena I speak of as empty, and are but false names which also indicate the mean. Wei Wen later transmitted his teachings to Chan Master Nanyue Hu Si, Chinese, Nan Yu Wei Si 515-577, who is traditionally figured as the third patriarch. During meditation, he is said to have realized the lotus samadhi, indicating enlightenment and Buddhahood. He authored the Mahayana Samatha Vipassana. Husi then transmitted his teachings to Ziyi Chinese, GE 538 to 597, traditionally figured as the fourth patriarch of Tiantai, who is said to have practiced the Lotus Samadhi and to have become enlightened quickly. He authored many treatises such as explanations of the Buddhist texts, and especially systematic manuals of various lengths which explain and enumerate methods of Buddhist practice and meditation. The above lineage was proposed by Buddhists of later times and do not reflect the popularity of the monks at that time. Ziyi Scholars such as Paul Lauren Swanson consider Ziyi Chinese, Ji 538-597 CE to have been the major founder of the Tiantai school as well as one of the greatest Chinese Buddhist philosophers. He was the first to systematize and popularize the complex synthesis of Tiantai doctrine as an original Chinese tradition. Zi analyzed and organized all the Agamas and Mahayana sutras into a system of five periods and eight types of teachings. For example, many elementary doctrines and bridging concepts had been taught early in the Buddha's advent when the vast majority of the people during his time were not yet ready to grasp the ultimate truth. These agamas were in upaya, or skillful means, an example of the Buddha employing his boundless wisdom to lead those people towards the truth. 
Subsequent teachings delivered to more advanced followers thus represent a more complete and accurate picture of the Buddha's teachings, and did away with some of the philosophical crutches introduced earlier. Zi's classification culminated with the Lotus Sutra, which he held to be the supreme synthesis of Buddhist doctrine. The difference on Zi's explanation to the Golden Light Sutra caused a debate during the Song dynasty. Zi's Tiantai school received much imperial support during the Sui dynasty, because of this, it was the largest Buddhist school at the beginning of the Tang and thus suffered because of its close relationship with the House of Sui. Genre After Ziyi, Tiantai was eclipsed for a time by newer schools such as the East Asian Yogacara and Huayan schools, until the sixth patriarch Jingxi Zhanren revived the school and defended its doctrine against rival schools such as the Huayan and Faxiang. The debates between the Faxiang school and the Tiantai school concerning the notion of universal Buddhahood were particularly heated, with the Faxiang school asserting that different beings had different natures and therefore would reach different states of enlightenment, while the Tiantai school argued in favor of the Lotus Sutra teaching of Buddhahood for all beings. Zanran's view of Buddha nature was expanded in his Jingongpi or Diamond Scalpel, which is the locus classicus of the doctrine of the Buddha nature of insentient beings. According to Shuman Chen, Zhanren provides his rationale primarily from the perspective of the all-pervasive quality of Buddha nature, which he considers synonymous with suchness. This rationale indicates that external tangible objects like water, buildings, and flora, formless sounds and smells, and internal thoughts or ideas all possess Buddha nature. This is because Sakamuni Buddha and any other Buddha's meritorious qualities in their practice leading to enlightenment and in the resultant realization do not reject anything, instead embracing all. In the Tiantai terminology, the Buddha and all beings mutually include, inter-pervade, and are identical to each other. <laughs> Post-Tang crisis and Song revival After Zhanren, Tiantai declined once again. Brooke Zipporin writes that this period has been seen as the second dark age of Tiantai, a state of crisis, extending from the Tang into the Five Dynasties and Northern Song, an age marked internally by the deterioration of distinctive Tiantai ideas and marked externally by the loss of crucial texts and monastic institutions, especially after the persecution of 845, a period that saw the increased influence of Chan. During this period, Huayan and Chan influences made strong inroads into Tiantai thought. Zanran's disciple and seventh patriarch Dao Sui, and syncretic figures such as Ji Yuan and Dao Chang Ningfen all combined Tiantai with Chan ideas, particularly of the Hazi school. Dao Sui, Chinese, Dao Sui, Pinyin, Dao Sui is important because he was the primary teacher of Saicho, the founder of the Japanese Tiantai tradition, known in Japanese as Tendai. Other Tiantai syncretists include Desheo 881 to 972, who was associated with the Feian branch of Chan, and his student Yangming Yenshou 954 to 974, who attempted to unify Tiantai, Huayan, and Yogacara teachings under a kind of idealism influenced by Zongmai, emphasizing what he called the one pure formless mind. This situation led to the famous debate within the Tiantai school known as the Home Mountain, Shanjia versus. Off Mountain Shanwai debate. Off Mountain supporters, as they were later polemically termed, supported these new doctrines, such as the One Pure Mind, claiming they were originally Tiantai doctrines, while Home Mountain supporters saw the original Tiantai view as different and superior to this new view influenced by Chan and Huayan doctrines, especially by Zongmi's works. The most eminent figure during this debate was Patriarch Siming Jili who wrote various commentaries on Zi's works and defended the home mountain view. Jili's major criticisms included attacking Chan's failure to understand the necessity of the use of words and scriptural study as part of practice as well as criticizing Zongmi's view of a pure mind as the Buddha nature, arguing instead that the three truths as taught by Zi are the ultimate reality. For Jili, mind or consciousness has no special status relative to other types of dharmas, such as physical matter. Over time, Jili's home mountain 
View turned out to be victorious, and his works became part of the orthodox Tiantai canon during the Song dynasty. Xian Zunxi was another important figure in this second Tiantai revival. His work focused on the promotion of rituals for lay Buddhists and worked on converting the populace away from using blood, meat and alcohol for funerary and ancestral rites. CIYI also promoted the practice of adopting local Chinese deities and spirits into the Buddhist religion as vassals or retainers and strongly promoted repentance rituals. These two figures were also associated with the popularization of pure land practices through the foundation of lay societies, lotus societies, lianshe. Tiantai monk Mao Zaiyuan (1096–1166) took this one step further by establishing what became known as the White Lotus Society, which allowed both men and women to attend together and even to preach and be in charge of society repentance halls as married clergy. Due to the efforts of these major Tiantai figures, the school became one of the dominant forms of Buddhism during the Song, alongside of Chan. Topic. Yuan, Ming and Qing The defeat of the Song dynasty was a serious blow to Tiantai which suffered another setback during the Yuan dynasty which supported Tibetan Buddhism, while Chan Buddhism continued to grow in popularity while attacking the legitimacy of other schools. This period saw the Tiantai figure Huxi Wise Florida, 1310, write his polemical treatise Record of Tiantai's Transmission of the Buddha's Mind Seal as an effort to defend the Tiantai tradition against Chan critiques. The Ming dynasty saw further religious revivals among the major Chinese Buddhist schools, including Tiantai, particularly under the reign of the Buddhist friendly Wanli Emperor. One of the main figures of the Ming Tiantai Buddhist revival is Miaofeng Junju (1537–1589), who lectured widely and whose students revived ancestral Tiantai monasteries such as Gaoming and Iyawang. Yushi Chuandeng (1554–1628), a student of Miaofeng, was also another important figure who wrote a work entitled "On Nature, Including Good and Evil," which presents his ideas on doctrinal classification the principle of nature inclusion, and the practice of the Dharma gate of inherent evil attempting to harmonize these with Confucianism and the thought of the Surangama Sutra. Chuandeng was also instrumental in rebuilding Gaoming Monastery which had been abandoned by this time. Tianxi Shoding was one of the most influential teachers and exegetes of Tiantai during the Qing dynasty. Texts The Tiantai school takes the Lotus Sutra, Sadharmapundarika Sutra as the main basis, the Mahaprajñaparamitaupadisa of Nagarjuna as the guide, the Mahayana Mahaparinirvana Sutra as the support, and the Panyukavim Satasahasrika Prajñaparamita Sutra the Prajñaparamita Sutra in 25,000 lines for methods of contemplation. The Pusa Ying La Benye Jing T. 24, no 1485, is also a key text. Tiantai is often termed the Four Sutras One Treatise School see Jing Yi Lun because of the strong influence of these texts on the tradition. In addition to its doctrinal basis in Indian Buddhist texts, the Tiantai school also created its own meditation texts which emphasize the principles of Samatha and Vipassana. Of the Tiantai meditation treatises, Zi's Concise Samatha Vipassana, Xiao Ji Guan Maha Samatha Vipassana, Mo He Ji Guan and Six Subtle Dharma Gates Lu Miao Fa Men are the most widely read in China. Rujun Wu identifies the work Mohe Zhiguan of Ziyi as the seminal meditation text of the Tiantai school. The major Tiantai treatises studied in the tradition are the following works of Ziyi, the three great Tiantai treatises. The Mohe Zhiguan Mo He Ji Guan, the Great Calming and Contemplation. Read with Zanran's commentary, Zhiguan Fuxing Zhuan Hongju Ji Guan Fu Xing Chuan Hong Wei. The Fawa Shweni Fawa Zan Yi, the Profound Meaning of the Lotus Sutra. Read with Zanran's commentary, Fawa Shweni Shi Jian Fawa Zan Yi Shi Qian. The Fawa Wenju Fawa Wenju, the Words and Phrases of the Lotus Sutra. Read with Zanran's commentary, Fawa Wenju Ji Fa Wa Wenju Ji The Five Lesser Tiantai Treatises The Guanyin Pusa Puman Pin Shweni Guan Yin Pu Sa Pu Men Pin Zan Yi The Profound Meaning of the Universal Gate of Avalokiteshvara Bodhisattva Chapter 
read with the Jili's commentary, Guanyin Shueni Ji Guan Yin Zan Yi Ji. The Guanyin Pusa Puman Pin Yishu, Guan Yin Pu Sa Pu Men Pin Yishu, the commentary on the Universal Gate of Avalokiteshvara Bodhisattva chapter. Read with Jili's commentary, Guanyin Yishu Ji Guan Yin Yishu Ji. The Jingguangming Jing Shueni, Jin Guangming Jing Zan Yi, the profound meaning of the Golden Light Sutra. Read with Jili's commentary, Jingguangming Jing Shueni Shi Yi Ji, Jin Guangming Jing Zan Yi Shi Yi Ji. The Jingguangming Jing Wenju, Jin Guangming Jing Wenju, the words and phrases of the Golden Light Sutra. Read with Jili's commentary, Jingguangming Jing Wenju Ji, Jin Guangming Jing Wenju Ji. The Guan Wu Liang Shufo Jing Shu, Guan Wu Liang Shou Fu Jing Shu, the commentary on the Buddha of Immeasurable Life Sutra. Read with Jili's commentary, Miao Zong Chao Miao Zong Chao. Topic: Classification of teachings. Tiantai classified the Buddha's teachings in five periods and eight teachings. This classification is usually attributed to Ziyi, but is probably a later development. The classification of teachings was also done by other schools, such as the fivefold classification of the Huayan school. Five periods The five periods are five periods in the life of the Buddha in which he delivered different teachings, aimed at different audiences with a different level of understanding. The period of Avatamsaka. During 21 days after his enlightenment, the Buddha delivered the Avatamsaka Sutra. The period of Agamas. During 12 years, the Buddha preached the Agamas for the Hinayana, including the Four Noble Truths and Dependent Origination. The period of Vipulya. During eight years, the Buddha delivered the Mahayana teachings, such as the Vimalakirti Sutra, the Sramaladevi Sutra, the Suvarnaprabhasa Sutra and other Mahayana Sutras. The period of Prajna. During 22 years, the Buddha explained emptiness in the Prajnaparamita Sutras. The period of Sadharma Pundarika and Nirvana Sutra. In the last eight years, the Buddha preached the doctrine of the One Buddha Vehicle, and delivered the Lotus Sutra and the Nirvana Sutra just before his death. Topic. Eight teachings The eight teachings consist of the four doctrines, and the fourfold methods. Topic. Four doctrines Tripitaka teaching, the Sutra, Vinaya and Abhidhamma, in which the basic teachings are explained Shared teaching, the teaching of emptiness Distinctive teaching, aimed at the Bodhisattva Perfect teaching, the Chinese teachings of the Lotus Sutra and the Avatamsaka Sutra. Fourfold methods Gradual teaching, for those with medium or inferior abilities Sudden teaching, the distinctive teachings and the complete teaching for those with superior abilities Secret teaching, teachings which are transmitted without the recipient being aware of it Variable teaching, no fixed teaching, but various teachings for various persons and circumstances Topic. Teachings David Chappelle lists the most important teachings as the doctrines of The Threefold Truth The Threefold Contemplation the fourfold teachings, the subtle dharma, the nonconceivable discernment. Nan Y. Chin, a 20th century Chan teacher, summarizes the main teaching of the Tiantai school as the following: the one vehicle (SKT), Ekayana, the vehicle of attaining Buddhahood, as the main principle; the three forms of samatha vipassana correlated with the meditative perspectives of sunyata; the mean, as the method of cultivating realization. Topic. The Threefold Truth The Tiantai school took up the principle of the Threefold Truth, derived from Nagarjuna. Phenomena are empty of self-nature. Phenomena exist provisionally from a worldly perspective. 
Phenomena are both empty of existence and exist provisionally at once. The transient world of phenomena is thus seen as one with the unchanging, indifferentiated substratum of existence. This doctrine of interpenetration is reflected in the Tiantai teaching of 3000 realms in a single moment of thought. The threefold truth has its basis in Nagarjuna. Topic: <laughs> 3 contemplations. While the three truths are essentially one, they may be recognized separately as one undertakes the three contemplations. The first contemplation involves moving from the world of provisionality to the world of sunyata. The second contemplation is moving back from the world of emptiness to the world of provisionality with an acceptance thereof. The third contemplation involves balancing the previous two by following the middle path. Topic: The fourfold teachings. The three contemplations and threefold truth in turn form the basis of the fourfold teachings, making them parallel structures. Topic: <inaudible> Meditation practice. According to Charles Luck, in China it has been traditionally held that the meditation methods of the Tiantai are the most systematic and comprehensive of all. Tiantai emphasizes samatha and vipassana meditation. Regarding the functions of samatha and vipassana in meditation, Zi writes in his work Concise Samatha Vipassana The attainment of nirvana is realizable by many methods whose essentials do not go beyond the practice of samatha and vipassana. Samatha is the first step to untie all bonds and vipassana is essential to root out delusion. Samatha provides nourishment for the preservation of the knowing mind, and vipassana is the skillful art of promoting spiritual understanding. Samatha is the unsurpassed cause of samadhi, while vipassana begets wisdom. In Zee's magnum opus, the Great Samatha Vipassana, he outlined his meditation system as consisting of 25 preparatory practices, four kinds of samadhi and ten modes of contemplation. Zi saw the four samadhis as the main pillar of Tiantai meditation practice. Zi writes, Now if you wish to ascend to the stage of wondrous realization, you will not be able to reach it unless you practice. But if you become skilled at stirring and agitating the raw milk, then the essence of ghee may be obtained. The Lotus Sutra says, I also see the sons of Buddha cultivating all manner of practices in order to seek the path to Buddhahood. There are many methods of practice, but we may summarize them under four sorts, i constantly sitting, two constantly walking, three part walking part sitting, and four neither walking nor sitting. By referring to them collectively as samadhis, we mean that one thereby attunes, rectifies, and stabilizes the mind. The ta chi tu lun great perfection of wisdom treatise says skillfully to fix the mind on one spot and abide there without shifting that is called samadhi quote the dharmadhatu is a single spot and through true discernment you can abide there and never stray from it these four types of activity constitute the supporting condition for meditation by discerning the mind and resorting to the supporting condition of the four activities, one attunes and rectifies the mind. For this reason we call them samadhis. The Tiantai school also places a great emphasis on mindfulness of breathing in accordance with the principles of samatha and vipassana. Zi classifies breathing into four main categories, panting, chuan unhurried breathing, feng deep and quiet breathing, qi and stillness or rest. Shi Zi holds that the first three kinds of breathing are incorrect, while the fourth is correct, and that the breathing should reach stillness and rest. Influence <inaudible> 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 David Chappelle writes that although the Tiantai school has the reputation of being the most comprehensive and diversified school of Chinese Buddhism, it is almost unknown in the West. Despite having a religious framework that seemed suited to adapt to other cultures, to evolve new practices, and to universalize Buddhism, he attributes this failure of expansion to the school having narrowed its practice to a small number of rituals and because it has neglected the intellectual breadth and subtlety of its founder. Right. 
Topic See also Tiantai in Korea Tiantai in Japan Zhou Jichong Guoqing Temple Huayan Chinese Buddhism Chinese folk religion